Jesse and David had a typical family life until Jesse welcomed their daughter into the world. But after they discovered that their dog refused to let the baby sleep alone, they had to alert the police. Ever since Benji joined their family, they have never been the same. Benji has always stayed close to their daughter, and if they ever got separated, he would make it quite apparent with his bark. David was completely stunned when he finally understood what happened. He called the police right away, and they responded by pouring in every available officer. The first policeman to show up couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the scene. David was amazed that his pup could observe something like this. He was pleased to have such a vigilant dog by his side. Deep down, David knew that he had screwed up. He should have been the one protecting his daughter. Within minutes, at least a dozen more police cars arrived at the scene. They immediately started asking questions to both David and Jesse. The couple was in shock. They had no idea of the gravity of the situation until now. What the officers came for was disturbing for sure, but the fact that it already started when Jesse was pregnant was even more alarming. They had trusted the wrong people. But why did Benji refuse to let their daughter sleep alone? And what did David eventually figure out that such a large police presence was necessary? It all started when Jesse was finally pregnant. They both wanted this for a very long time. However, there was something that was bugging both of them. Their dog, Benji. They were hesitant about her reaction to the baby. Jesse had read some horror stories only from dogs that would not accept another family member. Jesse and David both hoped that Benji would accept this. Otherwise, they were definitely going to bring Benji to a shelter. Then one day when Benji finally noticed that Jesse was pregnant, she started barking at Jesse's belly repeatedly. Benji did not seem happy with the pregnancy. She started to act really weird. They could not figure out what was triggering this behavior. Did Benji feel threatened or was there something wrong with the baby that Benji could feel? Jesse had to get answers in quick before it would be too late. Jesse asked David to take Benji to the veterinarian. They had to make sure that there was nothing going on with Benji before they would need to choose between the baby or the dog. That choice would not be easy, but deep down, they knew that if they had to choose, they would definitely choose to bring Benji to a shelter if she could not accept the baby. This was to keep their daughter safe at all times. However, the vet cannot bring clarity. He did some medical checks to see if the dog was okay. There was nothing wrong. He told David that she must be feeling something that was going on with the baby. He advised David to take Jesse to the hospital for some checkups. When David brought the news to Jesse, she started crying. She felt like everything was wrong. Jesse mustered up all of her courage to call her doctor. He told her to come in immediately. Jesse called her friend Anne, who was there for her almost every day to take her. She had been helping during the pregnancy around the house. She showed up within minutes to help her friend get to the hospital. When arriving there, the receptionist told her she could go in. The doctor did some elaborate medical tests to make sure everything was all right. The ultrasound, as well as other tests, did not indicate anything that was wrong with Jesse or the baby. They still did not get the answers that were looking for. When they arrived home, Jesse broke down. She kept crying. She did not want to choose between her child and the dog, and comforted her and told Jesse that she would be there for them when they couldn't be home and would become their babysitter. She had plenty of time, discomforted Jesse. There would always be someone there to keep an eye on Benji. A couple of weeks later, Jesse finally gave birth to a beautiful girl, Lily. Benji had still acted strange, but this is when more erratic behavior started happening. The first few weeks, everything seemed to go fine. Both Jesse and David were home to care for their little girl. Benji seemed to have calmed down, but to when they started working and called them with some concerning news, she told Jesse that Benji refused to let Lily sleep alone. Benji would not leave her side, Jesse was totally baffled. 
When she told David, he did not think much of it. Benji was just caring for Lily. He thought it was beautiful. Then one day, Anne called in distress. She had separated Benji from Lily, and after returning downstairs, she was attacked by Benji. Benji was definitely overprotective. David knew that Benji had to be punished for this behavior. With a heavy heart, he went back to the veterinarian and the vet gave David a choice. He could bring Benji to a shelter or he could figure out why Benji was acting this way because the vet had a feeling something was off. David took offense to a comment that the vet made. He said to David that they were probably the problem. Benji did not trust them to let Lily sleep alone. However, David knew deep down that there was something else he could not be the problem, could he? For a while, they decided to observe Benji together with Lily. Lily seemed to love the dog, and Benji definitely loved Lily. They could not say goodbye to Benji because she was overprotected. The problem was that whenever David would bring Lily to bed or Lily fell asleep, Benji would be at her side. David just accepted the situation until one day and called to say that she was bitten by Benji. This gave David a sudden realization. David realized that Benji only reacted strangely when Anne was around. Benji was calm when she was not around. and must be the problem he knew it. Jesse told David that he must calm down, but she refused to let David do anything erratic. Jesse told David that Benji refused to let Lily sleep alone at night as well, so Anne couldn't be the problem, could she? Jesse came up with a genius idea. She told David to install cameras around the house to keep an eye on Benji and Lily. This would definitely get some more answers. They could even keep an eye on Anne during the day. Anne seemed to be hesitant about David installing cameras in the house. She asked if it was necessary and would cause this. David thought this was very suspicious. He already did not trust her, and now she started asking all of these questions. When David reviewed the first few days of footage, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Benji was still very protective. Benji constantly kept an eye on Anne. It started to look like Benji did not trust her. David wanted to confront Anne. David had to do this without Jesse knowing. They were best friends after all. David got himself really mad and yelled at Anne. What are you doing to my daughter? Anne was totally caught off guard. She assured David she had no bad intentions and fired back at David. She was furious. How could she have done anything? That stupid dog behaved like this ever since Jessie was pregnant and she was not even around during the night. Then Jessie came home. Jesse got really mad at David for confronting Anne like this. She cannot believe that she was accusing her best friend of being a threat to Lily. Jesse gave David an ultimatum either figure it out quickly or get rid of Benji. David realized that moment that Anne had said something that would give him all the answers he needed. Benji reacted the same way at night. He had never reviewed the night footage, but now he definitely will. David started up the software he gasped when he realized that every single night the recordings were wiped off the hard drive. There was definitely something really strange going on here. But what he decided to make a separate encrypted backup every day for the night recordings. David knew for sure that he would get to the bottom of this. Benji had probably noticed something that neither he nor Jesse could sense. The next day, David was eager to watch the footage. His suspicion soon got confirmed when he loaded up the recordings. The footage of the baby's room was disturbing. He saw something entering through the window. David was in complete shock. He felt his heart pounding in his chest. When he reviewed more of the footage, he was even more shocked. He had to call the police before this got out of control quickly. David explained what he had seen. They told him they would immediately send all available officers to his home. David knew he just had discovered something huge, but what warranted such a huge police presence? David called Jesse to come home and with minutes he heard sirens outside his house. The first officers that arrived, Jesse arrived home as well. She demanded an explanation and when David showed her the footage, she fell on her knees. 
Why? An officer told Jesse and David that they had to be proud of their dogs for sensing this. They reviewed the footage and immediately asked David more questions about their home situation. He explained their dog's behavior and reaction to Anne. This triggered the officer. Where is she? He asked. They wanted to ask her questions. He gave them her number, but she could not be reached. Where was Anne? They asked for more information and Jesse told them everything they wanted to know. Meanwhile, Benji was upstairs with Lily. When officers entered the room, she immediately ran over to the wall and started barking at it. It looked like Benji wanted to tell the officer something. There was something hidden in the wall. They used a sledgehammer to destroy the wall. They destroyed the wall without even asking David or Jesse. There was a hidden compartment behind the wall. What was going on here? Without hesitation, they pulled everything out of there, including a safe. They had to get a safe cracker. In the mean, other officers were running a background scan on Ann Anderson. What they came up with shocked Jesse and David. There was no Ann. She was not findable in a database, nor was she ever registered anywhere. This person, whoever was fabricated her whole life, Jessie broke down. She had known her best friend for over 10 years now. How could this be happening? What was in the safe? Eventually a safe cracker arrived and Benji, in the meantime, kept barking at the safe. She also kept a close eye on Lily. She smelled something. When the safe cracker was finally done, they realized the gravity of the situation. A whole bunch of money, jewelry, documents, and passports were found inside the safe. When opening one of the passports, the officer recognized the person Jesse screamed, that's San. They found a hidden stash from Anne. The police captain came to Jesse. He told them that they were dealing with an international spy named Elizabeth Holmes. She was wanted in 17 countries for espionage. Jesse was shocked. The reason she infiltrated the lies of Jesse and David is that David works as the director of the National Security Company. He has access to the entire national security grid. Elizabeth had probably been hired by a rival company to leak secrets. At night, she wiped the footage and tried cracking David's computer. Benji was the only one that noticed something about Elizabeth. This is why Benji tried her very best to protect Lily from any danger that she could sense. Benji had cracked this case wide open. Officers told David that he should be very proud of their dog. Eventually, they managed to catch Elizabeth trying to leave the country. She had noticed the police presence at the house and she was not going to get caught. But when she did, she confessed everything. Benji saved the day. Benji and Lily grew up as best friends. Lily eventually learned the entire story from her parents. She and Benji were inseparable ever since. Benji never stopped looking out for Lily. David and Jesse tried to be more careful about who they let into their house if they made a mistake again. At least they had Benji to watch out for them.